Paul Harrell. Weekdays from 4 to 6. Learn more at paulharrell.com. Um, before we get to our interview with Senator Brian King, yesterday uh, was a terrible tragedy uh, in in Texas. Uh, and um, there was some coverage about this, all, all, obviously all over the media, all over the news. Um, all, and, and believe it or not, um, a lot of people were looking to Arkansas to remedy when it comes to being able to arm yourself in churches. Um, so on Fox News and their coverage, uh, several times throughout the day, they mentioned Senator Brian King. This is what it sounded like. Absolutely. And earlier uh, this evening, we had talked to Arkansas State Senator Brian King because he had uh, introduced uh, legislation in that state called the uh, Church Protection Act. The Church Protection Act allows churches to permit someone to carry a firearm in the church, someone that the church uh, officiates as the official, uh, in order to uh, protect the church in this type of case, if indeed that is needed. And clearly with the uh, allegations from uh, police that it was a bystander from across the street when uh, this guy right. got out of uh, his car. So Kelly joining us now, uh, we have Senator Brian King on the line. Brian, uh, good to talk to you, sir. Hey, good to be on, Paul, but to talk about the bill, but we certainly hope it was under better circumstances. And certainly our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone affected by this evil tragedy. I know. I know it's it's awful. I mean, the the, the guy's a, a complete monster, and uh, y you know it's. Um, I will say, you know, you hate to even get into the political gun debate at all. Um, but what, are, what? It's just fre refreshing to hear common sense, even from the White House. You know, even just to hear Donald Trump say, you know, it's a good thing there was somebody else there with a gun, or the death toll. It, it's I think I, it's without question the death toll would have been much much higher. Yeah, and one thing that the 2013 Church Protection Act was designed for was uh, rural situations. I mean, in many counties, on Sunday, you may only have one or two deputies uh, on call, and they may be covering 700 square miles, uh, and it would, this would allow, uh, you know, each church to designate who they wanted to carry. And it, it's just in those type of situations, the response time, uh, can be considerable in rural situations. I mean, it'd be bad enough if it was in a major city. And so this, like I said, it, you know, it, it, no one wants to even think about these things. It's even terrible to even think that we've got to do this type of thing. But because of maybe even religious intolerance reason, or, you know, maybe certain denominations, you have extremes on the right, left, that may not like a certain denomination or congregation. You have pastors that, uh, and churches that may be involved in a situation involving deep family issues that can cause controversy. You know, and we also have the crime issue, which you know is another failure by Jeremy Hutchison, the whole Hutchison clan, that has, you know, let our crime situation uh, get out of control. And all they want to do is is this big talk, but things keep getting worse and worse. But you have crime situations involving churches, and so. Uh, the 2013 bill basically was just to allow each church to be able to decide how they want to handle what I don't even think is a gun issue. I think of it as a security issue. Mm -hmm. And so they could either not allow any carry at all, or they could designate certain people, or they could allow anybody with a concealed uh, permit to, to be able to carry. Yeah, and uh, I, I completely agree. It is a security issue. It's it's also something that, in my opinion, uh, you know, it has it has to do with these churches having freedom to be whatever church they want to be. If I mean, if you want to, you want to post a sign out there that says "No guns allowed." I mean, you can do that. I, I don't think many churches would, because I think common sense would say we're kind of inviting an attack here. Now, talk a little bit yeah. about. I mean, since this tragedy has happened, though, people are looking to your bill and and Arkansas's uh, you know efforts here, right? I mean, I mean that's why you were mentioned on Fox News so much yesterday. Yeah, and that's what, uh, you know, a lot of states, even even what you would think is, you know, pro-carry states, we're not allowing uh, carry in churches, and, and we tried several times in Arkansas to do it, and and we were finally able to get it passed. One thing I will tell you about the sign issue, now one thing that several states do, and when I've done some research on this, and I think one thing is they need to clear up what is the actual Texas law. I don't think we've ever heard yet, or I haven't, and I've been busy today, but... Uh, on allowing 
ballot carry because, like I said, a lot of pro carry states, uh, do, you know, ban it, ban it in churches. And so, on the sign issue, many states will say, you know, we ban uh, carry. We did the opposite here in Arkansas. We I listened to several of the churches, sit down and worked with them, and I think that you know what we came up with is it's the individual carry person that's carrying with the permit to know the responsibility, know the rules, and have permission from the church or know the rules before they go in there. If you have to post a sign, the, the, the tragic part about that is that if you have 10 churches out there and three of them don't want any care at all, which I don't agree with, but yet they don't want that, you know, under my bill, they don't have to post a sign. But, Paul, we just had the campus carry debacle by Jeremy Hutchison, Dismaying, Hendren, yeah, yeah. you know, a whole host of them that went through this thing. That changed it. So now if you have an enhanced carry, which we don't, still don't even have yet, if you have this enhanced carry permit and a church does not want to, say the Catholic Church or the Methodist Church that has a hierarchy, I think they were originally opposed to my bill, originally opposed, and they wound up being okay with it, I think, in some level. But... Now, to even if they don't want any care at all, even enhanced carry, they're going to have to post a sign. Well, that's dumb for Ace Hutchinson to do that. Okay, let's just this just it, it's it, making it's actually churches vulnerable. Because, though. Yeah, it'll make churches. Yeah, vulnerable. it's just making a church say we're a gun-free zone. Gosh. I mean, it, it's just, I, and I tried to talk to them and say, you know, because, but once again, they have to. They pulled the bill out of committee several times. Uh, you know, myself and some other senators had it blocked and wanted to talk about things and try and work things out. No, they don't do it. They don't do it. They just go ahead. And that's why we had the debacle that we had. Hmm. Unbelievable. That is so frustrating. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was. So, I mean, so you tried to talk to them. And, and were you, what did mm-hmm. you say? Were you like, hey, you guys are going to undo a key, a key component of the Church Protection yeah. Act? Yeah, that's right. You know, Senator Hendren doesn't want criticism, and and so he just, uh, I talked to him, I pulled him back there in the back room, and I, and I said, you know, Jim, I said, hey, you know, let's just work on this bill. You, you may wind up getting what you want. I may vote for it. I may not. I don't know yet, but I said, let's just slow the process down. Let's have a discussion about it, because the one thing about gun bills is, Paul, it's just like dealing with guns in real life, like I was taught by my dad. You have to be careful. You have to think about every situation. You have to go through a lot of different things. They rushed the whole thing through. I mean, it was all a bunch of uh, backroom deals, the NRA. I don't even know what the heck they did. Uh, But, uh, you know, it was all relationships, and they all wanted to get something passed and do something. And another thing, too, is about the enhanced carry part. Well, I mean, we've had the bill in effect now for four years. And we haven't, fortunately, had any incidents or any problems with it. Like I said, it allows, it's very respectful. The nation wants to do in their own policy. And so they basically said, no, we want to decide for you. And I don't agree with that. I mean, I think it's, whatever policy you should have should be respectful. I didn't agree with the previous policy of these people down there in Little Rock deciding that everybody shouldn't have carry in churches and just basically deciding it. And it's still that way today in a different level that, uh, you know, they feel like they need to decide what's best for everybody. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're exactly right about that. And that's the whole, uh, I mean, th- that's the entire enhanced concealed carry, wh- whatever you want to call it, in a nutshell, um, I mean, when, when Asa Hutchinson, he called the Second Amendment a privilege uh, that, you know, that the government essentially yeah, gives people, um, they do not trust people with their natural rights. Like, they, they don't trust, they, they want you to have a gun if you mm-hmm. can satisfy Governor Asa Hutchinson's uh, concerns about you having a gun. Then you can have one. And that's just not. That's right. That's just not what. And if you have the extra time and money, you can you can do it. Exactly, exactly. And it's yeah. it's it's a joke. But but I but I am glad. I hope other states do look to your bill, Senator Brian King. Again, from 2013, was successful. Is the law? Uh, I hate that it's been undermined or, or changed. If some of these people don't want enhanced carry, they've now got to put a sign out there. Uh, which is going to make them more, more vulnerable. Uh, I hope something like that can sure. get fixed in the future. 
Um, but can I, while I have you here, I'd like to kind of explore on some of the the latest headlines um, that we haven't gotten to talk in a few weeks. But specifically, you know, you had the Trump administration uh, essentially ending the subsidies to insurance companies. As a result, okay, or sort of an indirect result, we have the Arkansas Insurance Department approving these huge, you know, 19, 20, 21 percent increases in premiums uh, on the people of Arkansas. Everybody's gotten a letter. People are really upset about it. And now we find out, and I know you know, that, you know, the state of Arkansas charges these insurance companies premiums 2.5 percent. Mm-hmm. And so when the price goes up, it actually means there's more tax dollars, tax revenue that comes into the government. So there's a real perverse incentive structure going on that actually it, the government's going to benefit from us paying higher premiums. Sure, they're going to get more money. And it was Senator Jonathan Dismang who deceives people. Uh, he snuck it through on an appropriation bill in special language. And it was helped by the joint budget chairmen. So all the insiders ushered it through. It wound up being a huge tax raise. That's what it was. It was a total uh, deceiving way of multiple times. I mean, you look at Senator Dismaine that, uh, you know, he came up with this legislation. I mean, he's, uh, uh, you know, it could be that he's got, uh, he needs to answer questions about his ties to Blue Cross Blue Shield because we've continued to be, the taxpayers have continued to pay for a much more expensive form of Medicaid expansion that is far more than the 215000 that was originally projected to be on the program. And yet there's questions I think he needs to answer uh, about his uh, ties to Blue Cross Blue Shield. I mean, he runs the legislation and, you know, I sit there and tra- challenged it challenge it mainstream media will do nothing about it blue cross blue shield has cashed millions of dollars in eligible beneficiary people that's getting benefit and senator this thing john burris another one that's getting getting more money out of the legislation that he he helped to see people on uh so you know this whole thing of everybody wants to talk about the clintons and paper play well, I think there's possible questions that need to be asked down there, but the main the media down there is not going to ask it. They're mm-hmm. just going to keep covering it up. Yeah, so. you know th- th- that's very interesting because the principle is very straightforward here. The principle is everybody agrees, in theory, that if you're a legislator, you can't make extra money on the side, or you I can't pay you, Senator King, to pass a law that says. You know, people in radio broadcasting get these benefits. I can't I can't pay you to do that. That is illegal. And yet there are potentially we have the consulting scheme that we see with, you know, Mike and Neil or and and, and all these others, you know, that are that are now involved in the whole court process uh, or or you see attorneys. I mean, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but if you're an attorney, you can take on a client and you can run bills for them. And you can get bills passed for them, and because your attorney, or because the contract in the in, in, that that the attorney and client sign says this uh, this is not for lobbying purposes, but it could very easily be, and a lot of times I think is, the attorneys are protected. The attorneys are able to assist yeah, the operate. That's the privilege that uh, Representative Ballinger keeps wanting to do, and he keeps saying, "Oh, well, you don't want to compromise." Well. What they want down there, the insiders want, they want a whole, uh, they want a big, huge hole that they can loophole, that they can jump in and out of and do whatever they want to do. I mean, you look at what's come out in, and since, uh, you just look at what's come out. I mean, Michael Lamro getting $120,000 check. Uh, you look at uh, Jake Files. You look at all this come out, and then every time you file legislation or do something, well, Brian King's a bully. I mean, we had Representative Michelle Gray in the testimony in the committee. Literally, I don't even think the woman even knows what she was saying. Sits there and says, well, my bill was too broad. She then 
went later on contradicted herself later on and said it wasn't broad enough. Yeah, we have that audio. I mean, these people just talk out of their head. And now, and now let's, the let's talk hand, about what that was for. Yeah. Okay, that was for your Medicaid disclosure bill. Medicaid disclosure bill. Yeah, if you, you know, on one hand, you would sit there and watch the video, folks. I mean, it just was, uh, I was like... It, it was very weird. What else do I mean? Now, is, is, I, we're going to have to worry about R- Russia nuking Guam? Uh, I mean, in this, how this is going to affect things? I, I mean, want, it just I, was crazy. But I want to I want to back up, you know, because I think I think we're talking about two separate issues. You got the Medicaid. Well, maybe no, we are. So when you mentioned uh, when you yeah. mentioned Representative uh, State Rep- Representative Bob Ballinger, um, he did not support your Medicaid disclosure bill, correct? No. And it and it was because no. of the because uh, it would have affected attorneys. Is that right? Well, that was one of the reasons. I mean, I don't know the other ones. He can get on and explain it, but I mean, he just goes to talking and talking, and so it, it's just. You know, these guys keep saying, oh, Brian King, this bill, this, you know, everything like that. Have you seen anything offer up? The only thing I see offered up is, is unfortunately, headline after headline. And then, you know, Senator Hendren wants to put out a bill from the caucus statement, which I didn't agree with, that we're committed to integrity. (laughs) No, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I've seen enough down there back several years ago and started questioning things. Why would and why so, why would attorneys not like the Medicaid disclosure bill? What why 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 would that well, I mean, be a it problem? Just, it just protects them. But you know, you don't even have to talk about attorneys. I mean, you look at some of the things going on and the possible pay to play thing, and when you start questioning it, you know, well then guess what? You're you're a bad person. You're being a bully. You start to demand certain things and. That they just keep talking and talking and talking, and then, you know, it just keeps getting defeated. And then, unfortunately, like I said, there's headline after headline of of things that come out that there is no way that Michael Lamro can explain himself uh, on that, uh, you know, hundred twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I mean, I have yet mm-hmm. to see Jake Files or the nursing home people who get hundreds of millions of dollars. And some of these owners, my understanding is, you know, have their own personal jet. So, uh, you know, I've not seen any explanation at all out of anything of how that works. I mean, I can't imagine if if I got 80000 or 8000 or $800 wired, you know, they would be going crazy. Yeah, you'd be that gone. Yeah, that, that's the thing. If, yeah, if you had eighty thousand dollars that was wired to you, you'd be, it'd be over for you. If, if, yeah. if and Lin- where's Dual Web on all? This? Yeah, ex- I'm I mean, so glad you mentioned that. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. Where are they? Dual Web is not going to say anything. All Dual Web is going to do is worry about cashing his check. I mean, and then they want to sit there and uh, talk about this and talk about getting in front of these committees. And all of a sudden, if you start questioning or saying something about what's going on, next thing you know, they want to attack you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope I hope you know people take your uh, you know your words and and actually do something different. Yeah, I've I mean, even offered dual web. We talk about the budget, and Jr. Davis comes on and and tweets things like, "You're false." You know, "You're false." But he never gets into anything exact. I mean, he never says anything. All he just says is, "You're wrong." And I mean, but J.R. Davis is a budget hawk. I know he's a spokesman. <laughs> well, you know, no, no, you know, Duncan Barrett is. Yeah. They keep missing projections. There's these phony headlines yeah. and and talk business talking about how year to date is above projections, and 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 then you look in the actual body of the article. I saw this Friday. It was maddening. No, you're we're looking, behind. You were way behind, yeah. and yet the headline said. And I actually at five o'clock, I'm going to explain to you why talk business's headlines don't match actually what what is in the body of the article it's pretty yeah, easy it's, it's more like it's roby brock is it's 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 uh and i'll quote somebody else it's it's uh roby croc with talk bb I <laughs> talk mean, bb I mean, oh wow that's yeah. good i mean that's uh, good. when Mike like bb was in there he just yeah, i mean and you think but that's what they do when they protect them down there well, i mean senator this doesn't get the if my, if my bills would have failed on a tenth of the comparison of what John Burris and Jonathan Dismay promised on the verification system, I would go have to be in a cave in Bolivia to get away from them. Yeah, but I they're mean, still credible. That, that's how bad it would be. They're, they're still yeah. credible Senator because— Senator Dismay flat-out deceived people and 
he gets away with it. Well, it's because that the deception enabled two billion dollars a year to come into the healthcare companies, which then goes into the political action committees, which then goes to the people that you know. That's why they're still credible, even though nothing they said about this being conservative, you know, has come true with the welfare programs. No. You know, that's why they're still credible because it was enough money to basically shut everybody up from legitimately criticizing them ever again. And yeah. that's what we're facing. And the other thing is with politicians today, they don't face up to it. I mean, we, I had gotten a little Twitter deal with Bob Ballinger, who sit there. We had, we, you know, Carroll County got new voting machines. I worked on that with the Secretary of State. I didn't go out there and run my mouth about it. I just did my job that I was supposed to do. We worked on it. They came up with a the deal. They signed the contract. And they delivered the machine. Yeah. And then Representative Ballinger later is tweeting about, He's working, he's working on making sure that Carroll County gets the machines. Well, if he would had been working on it, he would have known they were already delivered whenever he, he claimed to be working on it. So, you know, I just am like, this, this is just so out of hand with these politicians that just get out there today and just say whatever. I don't, I don't even know how they even think they can, they're, they're, being straight with people senator brian king it's always a pleasure sir i appreciate your work and uh, we gotta we gotta go but uh you be safe okay all right thanks paul all Take right care. folks gotta go back in a minute